Welcome back to this series of conversations at the Dark Reading News Desk at RSA. Terry Sweeney here with Dark Reading, and joining me now is Peter Junk, Vice President and General Manager, Intelligent Solutions for BAE Systems. Peter, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, we are talking about information sharing and collaboration, um, which are skills that are essential to security practitioners. Um, walk us through some of the less obvious benefits of collaboration in and outside of the SOC. Yeah, I, th I think we've all grown up on understanding about different types of indicators of warning, but what really is not always abundantly aware in kind of an information sharing environment where you're collaborating amongst like a critical infrastructure is you're usually not the first victim. And so it, we can buy lots of tools and technology that if it has no data in it, it's never gonna predict that event, but generally being well connected with your industry can tell you about that. I think the second piece is also first strategies usually fail uh, on ah. your remediating them. And so really being able to collaborate amongst others of what worked and more importantly, what did not work from your tactic. I, th I think the other side we've also found is some of our junior analysts actually can go and become participants and leading others in our industry. And it actually helps develop the leadership roles that we don't have enough of talent. It also feels like the stakes have never been higher. So uh, while technology is often a good fix, there's, there's the information sharing piece that um, needs to happen as well. Is, is that off base? Uh, no, it, it, the stakes are never been higher. I think that's also what's keeping a lot of people in our industry is the purpose that really gives something else to cybersecurity professionals where often early days it was hard to connect to mission outcomes of the business. Uh, they've never been so interlocked. Sure. Um, I was struck to read that the levels of collaboration in industry sectors like financial services or even manufacturing are are, are actually quite high, which given the competitive nature of those, of those sectors, actually was really surprising to me. I, I'm curious what you make of that. You know, I think one, those of us in regulated or very interconnected supply chains, collaboration is, is critical. Also, I think you, we've come to this point to where cyber is not a competitive advantage. It is something that we all have shared responsibility in our shared kind of arenas. Manufacturing, as you talked about, the defense industry is one of the most advanced manufacturers that's out there. Uh, not only must our supply chain never be interdicted, we must also make sure that the availability of those components, those parts that are often in very short supply are always available. And so that's where we connect and communicate very highly, much like we see in the IT industry where every day on the news you hear about something. Sure. Well, it's, it's also striking that, um, that companies in these sectors aren't using their superior secure security as a, as a marketing sort of gambit. Um, I, I think there's a sense of there but for the grace of God go I, uh, that, that the ransomware attack, the break-ins, uh, whatever, whatever online evil you can imagine um, is, is just another uh, hacker away, correct? I, I think so. I would also go beyond just for public good. It, it is you know, long-term enduring partnerships. In the defense community, it's been a long-term period to where we're doing advanced research, R&D, technology to get ahead, that we're entrusted with insights to be able to do that. Uh, taking cybersecurity as an advantage kind of takes away from that trust. Sure. I think many of the other critical infrastructures, they're, they're looking for trustworthiness of the entire ecosystem. If you think of aviation, you, you may be on another carrier for a leg that you bought and thought was one airline. Uh, if you didn't make all of that to the same level of safety and security, it would be really hard to trust kind of book in a flight. You've been involved in the, the collaboration and information sharing arena for, for some time. Um, where have you seen that process of information sharing or collaboration start to break down and, and what, what can fix it? Yeah, it, you bring up a good point. Yeah, I've spent since 2014, I've been on the board of the ITI SAC, which is a formal nonprofit to do information sharing. Uh, president for five years there, really trying to help shape what to do. And I, and I think in that, we've seen things like technology really advance the tactical information sharing, like indicators. Here's a bad IP address, here's a bad domain name, here's a bad mm -hmm. file. I think we've seen advance the strategic level you know, here's how to approach cybersecurity, follow the standards, use best practices. Where it breaks down is still at that operational level, in the middle. 
you know, how is it that really when I'm in the middle of a fight, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. leveraging collaboration. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to tell, as you said, uh, kind of my peer competitors on one side, really the vulnerability of what I may be having in a systems type issue. And, it, and so it's really that operational level to where we can really gain the trust, leverage kind of the power of our teams, even in the industries that we're, we're still struggling a bit to really be collaborating operationally. IT vendors and technology service providers, um, I would say, aren't um, well known for um, a lot of sharing or collaboration, especially in the, the, the cloud market. Um, what are you seeing there? Yeah, I would actually kind of contend that the cloud market and the, the SaaS software provisioning approach is actually sharing quite well. I, th I think it's not publicly, but one of the things that cloud has done is really transformed us to a shared security responsibility. Uh, when okay. we think of security controls from a standard, there's a certain amount that the hosting player, the infrastructure as a service is gonna take on. We've gotta go trust in there how they're doing that. And so as we're customers to do that, we'll share. Uh, we sit in the role to where we even, for our government customers, act as the platform solution provider, bring, building a framework on top of that. And so they're going to hear from our voice what we're able to inherit from the infrastructure come out. Uh, one recent thing within the, the public environment, within the ITI SAC, we actually created a new special interest group for critical SaaS uh, providers. So these large corporations, the salesforces.com uh, of the world. And, and what we found, though, is that a lot of the sensitivities to really gain that, it's hard and that's where we kind of built these small, safe, trustworthy organizations and areas that you can get a group of them together, maybe not showing the adversaries what are our weaknesses publicly, but I would contend that sharing is at a high point given the years that I've seen. Great news. Is, is there a, a, a real life use case that showcases the, the, the power of information sharing and collaboration you can share? Yeah, I, I think we've got a couple recently. Uh, Log4j is still not done, but there mm -hmm. was a vulnerability of a, a piece of software that many of us from open source used in the tool chain. And you know, rapidly we got warning out for everybody. And, and part of that warning was also realizing it's built into things that you don't think about. And, and so even helping people realize that it was within the supply chain of kind of software packages. But the second piece is as we patched that and as we fixed it, it broke a lot of systems. Mm -hmm. And so how do you even help others understand hey, when you are remediating that vulnerability in, in one existing system, how to get to the next. And so that's where many of us had to come together, not only to move out very quickly ahead of it. I, th I think you're seeing now with the VMware issues, that was the same one. Uh, many of that was the middleware that sat amongst the infrastructure of many of us. And we had to understand what would happen as you went and closed those holes uh, to operational issues. And so those are a couple of recent ones that I know really have taken a lot of action and there was a lot of lessons learned. Peter, let's go out with uh, some uh, tools, processes, or organizations that you can share with viewers um, to help them up their collaboration game. Yeah, definitely. So BA Systems has been a big proponent of the ISACs, uh, both as a member and active participant and leading in the IT ISAC, as well as also the National Defense ISAC. They're great because they give you access to analysts, tools, technology, indicators, data. Uh, also, this is one where we've seen research partnerships, so MITRE Ingenuity, uh, who's kind of really come and built upon the attack framework, which is really going beyond the legacy kill chains, has been great for really advancing how would we operationalize those environments. And then I always love coming out to RSA for Cloud Security Alliance on Monday, uh, which is a great organization, just giving us another way to get together and, and learn. Peter, this has been a nice change up from, from bits and bytes and actually the, the, the social piece of uh, improving enterprise security. Thanks for joining us on the Dark Reading News Desk today. No, thank you so much. We've been talking with Peter Junk from BAE Systems. This has been Terry Sweeney for the Dark Reading News Desk. Thanks for joining us for this conversation. We'll see you next time.